boys. You know, we got that pay-per-view in a few more days. And like always, if you guys are new here, we're doing some rare locks of UFC 309. If you guys have no idea what that means, again, if you guys are new here, pretty much I got five things here for you guys that if you see them on any betting website, if you see these props literally anywhere, put the house on it, take a mortgage out, go into crippling debt and bet on every single one of these. If you want to parlay them, because like I said, they're a lock. So that means regardless of regardless of anything, they're going to hit. And if you parlay these bad boys, you're going to make some crazy ass money. Like I said, I got five things here. They're going to be ranging from in the fight you know, the press conference, post-fight press conference, all that stuff. It's going to be about fighters. It's going to be about, you know, promoters. It's going to be about commentators, you know, everything and anything it's going to be about. Let's start off with the number one thing. You know, these aren't in specific order. Number one doesn't mean it's the highest thing. It's just, that's what I have right now, number one. Number one, I think we're going to see a good chunk of retirements in this card. You know, either in the octagon, on social media, a few weeks, a month-ish later. I think we're going to see a decent amount of retirements because of this card. You know, some names that I think could retire this card. Jim Miller, 41 years old. Nikia Krylov, I could see him... If he loses his fight, I could see him retiring because of health implications. You know, he's been injured and he's very injury prone. So I could see him just hanging it up after that. Chris Weidman, Chris Weidman, again, another old guy in this scene. If he wins or loses, I wouldn't be surprised. Eric Anders, I think if Eric Anders wins, I don't know if he retires, but if he loses, I could definitely see him retire. And then, of course, we got John Jones and Stipe Miocic. It's pretty much pretty much a done deal we're gonna get a double retirement from john jones and steepy after this fight unless unless john loses you guys have, you guys are gonna have to let me know in the comments below if john loses do they do a immediate rematch after that you know because if john loses i don't i don't know if he retires he 100 wants to get that get back and does the ufc give him an immediate title shot after you know to get that rematch i honestly don't think so just because of how low interest ufc 309 currently is if you guys haven't watched my my crash out video make sure you watch that one after this because 309 is just a garbage ass card but let's go down to the second thing john jones will have a retirement speech much like henry cejudo you know henry cejudo the one of the last things that cejudo did say was you know dana you know you know my number, you know, you know, trying to say, you know, for the right amount of money, I'll come back. I think John Jones is going to do something very, very similar to Henry Cejudo. I think he's going to have a, a retirement speech saying, yeah, I could see him putting like something like a El Kakui type of thing, like one glove in the octagon, one glove still with him, something like that. I could see him doing like, you know, both gloves in the middle of the octagon, but he keeps the belt and he says, you know, I'm still the champion, blah, blah, blah. You know, then call out Aspinall saying, if you really want this, you know, I'm the real champ, blah, blah. Retiring and saying if the numbers are right, he'll come back. I could 100% see John Jones doing that. That's why he's on these rare locks. Let's go down to the third thing. Third thing is going to be the UFC press conference. And we have everybody on stage. This is going to be one of the worst press conferences this entire year. It's going to be a boring ass press conference. You're telling me, John Jones Stipe. Is there going to be any bad blood there? No. Is there going to be any fun questions between there? Is there going to be any drama between them? Absolutely not. It's going to be boring, monotone questions, monotone answers being brought back. And when with Steve Bay, it's going to be like, mar, 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 mar. you know, it's, is it going to be that entertaining? No. The only ones I could see maybe Charles versus Chandler, but I think Chandler, you know, always very respectful. I don't think anything's going to happen from that. You know, we're going to hear from charles go you know the champion has a name and his name is charles Oliveira. he's gonna drop that line you know and then are you the women's fight i'm not even gonna get into that one you know because there's gonna i would be surprised if either of those two get any questions and you know bo nickel bo nickel paul craig bo nickel again very monotone guy we're not gonna get anything from him paul craig same thing then ruffy and long top I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Long Top even gets a question. So, yeah, this this press conference is going to be very hard to get through. Very boring. And, you know, we've had our share of very boring and uneventful and just waste of time press conferences this year. 
this one's gonna try on this one's gonna be by far the worst by a long shot and you can mark my words this one bet the house on this one unless you guys are seeing something i'm not i don't see any entertainment coming from this fight card in that press conference at all let's go down to this fourth thing fourth thing joe rogan will get emotional after the main event ended you know we've seen joe rogan i think which one was it it was one of the fights where, you know, we had a retirement of one of these female fighters. I'm blanking on the name now. Carla Esparza. Carla Esparza, you know, retired. Joe Rogan was <laughs> up there borderline crying interviewing Carla Esparza as she's retiring, which is hilarious. But, yeah, I think we're going to see a very emotional Joe Rogan after this fight. I think the main event's going to be over. We're going to have, you know... Joe, Ro we're going to have John Jones, Stipe. They're both going to retire. They're going to both have their moment on the mic. I think we're going to see maybe not in the octagon, maybe like a few minutes after when they're doing their closing section, Joe Rogan, you know, getting a little bit emotional talking about this was once in a lifetime type of fight, you know, having two greats go at it and just starting to tear up. I get 100% see that Joe Rogan, one of the more, you know, emotional men on that broadcasting booth. Plus, you know, we all know he loves himself some some John Jones. He just he can't help but glaze John Jones. Let's go down to the fifth and final thing on this list. Dana White will absolutely lie to all of our faces at that post fight press conference. He will sit up there, look us dead in the eye, and say, Yeah, I'm a hundred percent confident John Jones will fight Aspinall next. He'll look us dead in the eye and say that shit. I guarantee it. And to be honest, I I wouldn't be surprised if we get John Jones versus Tom Aspinall. Just because, you know, I could see them offering John Jones a stupid amount of money, a boxing level type of money, just because now they got that oil money. They got those Saudis there. And I bet those Saudis will help, you know, fund that fight. Mark my words, if John Jones versus Aspinall does happen, it's going to be somewhere in the Middle East. It's going to be controlled by that oil money, and they're going to pay John a fat, fat bag. But if that doesn't happen, you know, we're going to have Dana lie to our face. And, you know, he's going to be like, yeah, yeah, I'm 100% confident, you know. John Jones is going to respect the fact that, you know, the fighters before him gave him that chance. And I think he's going to do the same thing for Aspinall. They're going to give him the chance, you know. I'm 100% confident in that. When When is this going to happen? Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's a... Uh, we're going to have to go to the drawing board and, you know, we'll do that on Monday. You know, some bullshit like that's going to happen. But again, mark my words, if it does happen, you heard it here first. That's how it's going to happen. And yeah, those are the rare locks of UFC 309. You guys have to let me know in the comments, would you guys have any rare locks for this card? And, you know, typically I only do these for pay-per-views. I think I'm happy I've only done them for pay-per-views. I think I'm only going to continue doing these rare locks for pay-per-views, not these normal every week cards, only pay-per-views. So yeah, once again, if you guys have any rare predictions, any rare locks, put them in the comments below. The best one can get pinned. And yeah, quickly also, look at this shit real quick. 99% of you guys are watching this shit for free. Your boy's on that goal to get to a thousand subscribers. And I've been grinding. I've been putting that work in. I've been I've been putting that work in so much, your, your boy had a crash out a few days ago about this card. So help your boy out, get to a thousand subscribers, stop being a hoe about it, hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications so you never miss any of these rare videos. Yeah, I believe last week, last month, 308, the last rare locks we did, we got all of them right. I'm pretty sure maybe one of them wrong because to be, like, to be honest, between you and me, these shit, like, it's a lock, but doesn't mean it always happens. So... We got, I believe, for sure we got four out of five right, which is good, but five out of five, I think, and I, I think I'm going to get five out of five on this one, you know, mark my words, five out of five, for, from now on, all of these five out of five, but that being said, thank you guys so much for watching to the end of the video, there's really not that much else left to say, except for I will see you guys in my next video.